Welcome to The Tech Ranch, live and local here on Super Talk 1270. The latest gadgets, online security, websites and apps, social media, and so much more. How can technology help you? Let's find out. It's time for the Tech Ranch on Super Talk 1270. From our studios in beautiful Mandan, North Dakota, along the mighty Missouri River, here is your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. Autonomous cars and unmanned aerial vehicles are continuing to make significant advances. Today we will showcase those advances as well as talk about the autonomous friendly corridor initiative and if you're living on highway 83 somewhere between canada and mexico you'll want to stay tuned for that oh, because that's okay going to impact everybody along that uh, yeah miss metaverse kate aquino will be joining us again she'll be bringing us up to date on the new fusion project I like her. she's cool she really is cool it's great to have her on the show uh so talking, we'll be talking about the fusion project and how they'll be changing the world as we know it uh, as well as the most connected person on the planet. So she'll be talking about that as well. And at the control panel, producer extraordinaire, and happy anniversary well, to you, you and your wife. Well, uh, thank you. Eight years? Eight years of wow. marital bliss. Yeah, Jim Walsh. I forgot to say your name, Jim. I so. never knew what happiness was until I got married. Wow. Now it's too late. <laughs> <laughs> the geezer gave me that joke. I think I'll just give it back to yeah, him. Yeah, you should probably I'll give it back, it back to him. To him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Halloween's coming up pretty shortly, uh-huh. and uh, we might have talked about this last year, you know. But there are some apps that you can use to uh, keep your kids safe. All right. Yeah, and uh, one of them's called Trick or Tracker, and uh, just like it sounds, T R I C K or Tracker. And if your kids use smart devices, you know, if they have an iPhone or an sure. Android or whatever, you can actually put this uh, app on their phone. And it will communicate back to your phone and let you know where your kids are at. Exactly. Okay. Which is pretty cool. It can also create, and I thought this was interesting, kind of an electronic fence type of scenario. So let's say you want your kids to to stay within, let's say, three block area of your house. (laughs) If they leave that perimeter, they get zapped. Yeah. That would be hilarious. Like actually. a dog, yeah. yeah. The invisible face. Yeah. No. What, what it does is just it just tells you that they oh, have broken okay. that perimeter. It doesn't know. zap. Them. It doesn't well, that, zap them. Although that would good. be an interesting feature. Yes. I, I can see some parents going for that actually. <laughs> also, it's got a built-in flashlight, you know, for the kids. So yeah. If they want to use their phone for a flashlight here and there, the Trick or Tracker will do that. So you need to check this out. We'll talk about it more next week as well. Yeah. But uh, I would highly recommend people since it's getting close to that time to at least. Go check out Trick or Tracker and uh, you know start getting ready for Halloween. Well, you'll have so, that on the website, right? I will on have that website, on the website. Yes. You bet. You bet. We should put it on yours too. Oh yeah. yeah. We should link from ours to yours. You know what we should do what? is maybe on Super Talk is have a list of all the different apps. Yes. That would be good for Halloween this year and other safety things that your yeah. smart devices can do. So we'll work on that. Yeah. So. Get back to me and we'll uh, we'll put that in the works. That sounds good. Yeah. So autonomous vehicles. When you hear that, what do you think? Vehicles that drive themselves. Oh, my goodness. That's exactly what it is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Green stamps for me, I guess. (laughs) So that's exactly what it is. And, of course, there's a lot of advances going on in that world. You know, and I think a lot of people, when we think about that, we think of drones, you know, unmanned aerial aerial vehicles. Science fiction-y stuff. Yep. And, of course, when you think drones, you think of maybe not so good stuff. Oh, yeah, like uh, we were talking earlier off the air during the cold war they had they had an idea called project pluto okay and the idea was they were they were working on this in the 50s and i think it was the eisenhower administration that finally shot it down because they were so spooked by it the idea was they would develop a an atomic powered cruise missile this thing they would launch it and it would cruise for like weeks on end around the Russian countryside, dropping bombs at various intervals. If it needed dropping to. Dropping nuclear bombs. Okay. Yeah. And the Pentagon shot it down finally with encouragement from the Eisenhower administration because they just thought this was too awful. You know, just too awful a concept. They said, if we get this, the Russians are going to want, they're going to develop one, and this is just a mess. Plus the idea that it's atomic-powered, and they were concerned about the environmental impact sure. of all that nuclear radioactive yeah. stuff even back in the, the 50s they were concerned oh with yeah this. wow yeah. now think about this this thing was 
it actually spooked the Pentagon. Yeah. That's how freaky it was. Yeah. And they actually went with the less scary option of the ICBM. <laughs> you know? <laughs> well, at least that was underground and well, yeah, we were only going to yeah. launch it if it was needed type right, of deal. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, interesting. You know, I was just thinking about that and we'll have to bring this up with uh, Kate in a little while here. You know, with fusion, not fission, but fusion, right. you know, uh, and we'll get into the, the differences here in a little bit, but you, you attach that to a drone. Mm-hmm. I mean, you literally could have vehicles that could stay in flight, I guess you could indefinitely. say. Indefinitely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Well, isn't Fusion uh, cleaner? It is dramatically cleaner. Dramatically yes. cleaner. Yeah, yeah. And uh, again, we're going to pick on Kate's brain a little bit a yeah. little later here, and she'll talk us a little bit about the difference with the differences between Fission and Fusion. Right. And, you know, there's talk about within five years that uh, Fusion will be used in aircraft. So imagine... Well, they've been talking about that for years. A I'm long time. The same problem, the same yes. issue, because they were concerned about this stuff spewing out of the right, tailpipe. Right, right. God this, forbid one crashes. Oh, yeah. Then you've got yeah. that stuff all yeah. over. Yeah, and the Fusion can be contained in a much smaller unit oh, as well. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's very, very interesting. But anyway, uh, autonomous vehicles, of course, drive themselves. And uh, there is an initiative underway called the Autonomous Friendly Corridor. Ah. And the corridor runs Highway 83, which is basically north <laughs> oh, of here we go again mine at North Dakota. Yeah, yeah. Remember a few years ago they were talking about the, the trucker, uh, the superhighway for the truckers? Yes, yes. And a lot of people, the, the Pat Buchanan faction, they got all upset because they didn't want uh, people from Mexico driving on our highways. Right, like right, right. Well, this, this would take it to, a, you know, of course, it's a little different scenario here. Mexican uh, cars and, driving themselves up and down the highway. Exactly, yeah. But but we're not going to build any new infrastructure for this. Oh, okay. So it's not going to be a super highway. It's still going to be the two-lane road. In some areas, it's four-lane, of course. But uh, but these vehicles then would be able to participate in commerce. So Hmm. the the issue right now is that these manufacturers can go after and uh, build all the stuff they want to, but there are no regulations out there. So it's basically, it's illegal. You know, if you put a drone in in the air and take photographs, for example, and charge... As a wedding photographer, that you're breaking the law, believe it or not. Ooh, okay. You know, if you're delivering pizzas <laughs> with these things, you're breaking the law. Uh, if you're Bummer. delivering beer, like at uh, Lake Mille Lacs last, last uh, winter, I always loved that story. This yeah. bar was delivering beer with drones to ice fishermen. <laughs> <laughs> but in a couple of days, they were found out. FAA came in and, and shut them down. So, yeah. so you can't participate in commerce, meaning that you can't charge for services. Well, the corridor would allow that to happen. Oh. So that's what. And so these companies then would would hopefully start using these these uh, vehicles or whatever to, uh, you know, within that corridor to ex- maybe to experiment to see what's viable, what's not. Right. And uh, you know, how cool would it be to program a vehicle in Texas to bring stuff to? North Dakota. Especially beer. Beer would be good, yes. Yeah, let's get a case of Lone Star beer, you know, bring it on up here. Call, uh, you know, the package store in Amarillo. Hey, sending me up a case of Lone Star. You're, you're reminding me of my youth now, you know, back in the days when when uh, uh, certain products weren't uh, sold in our state. Right. So we would go across the border and bring them back. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if that was legal or not. And I shouldn't be bringing that up now, I suppose. No. Yeah. Well, I think the statute of limitations. Might be up. Safe. Yeah, I'm pretty old now. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Anyway, after the break, everybody, we will continue our conversation about autonomous vehicles. So come on back. Right now, 43. Get the traffic and weather information you need anytime on Super Talk 1270. And online at supertalk1270.com. Follow the Guru of Geek at facebook.com backslash the tech ranch or Twitter at Guru of Geek or the tech ranch.com. Here again is your Guru of Geek, Marlo Anderson. And we want to thank all of our listeners across the country and around the world who follow us on the Blueberry Network. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. The thank Tech you, Posca- you, thank you, thank Podcast thank Network. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I'm thanking each and every one of them. That's going to take thank a while. Okay, well, okay. or maybe not. Maybe we just have one listener. We'll have the geezer yeah. do it. Okay, thank okay. you. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, of course, we're on Tuned In and on our own app, Radio yeah. Pup, which, of course, we absolutely love. So you got to go grab the Radio Pup app and, and put that on your smart device so you can follow us everywhere you go. Yes. Yeah. So we're talking about autonomous vehicles and how they're going to start integrating into our life a little bit. And they have all kinds of cool 
things that are coming out, even for cars. So we're just going to start with that a little bit, Jim. Okay. Um, ever park in a tight parking spot? Oh, yes. Can't open the doors? Mm-hmm. Or maybe you come out into a parking lot where you had all kinds of room before, and all of a sudden you're like, how am I supposed to open my door to get yeah. in the car right. You know, without banging into the person next to you because they park so close Try to, to you? Try to crawl in through the trunk. That's yeah, fun. exactly. Yeah. Well, imagine if you didn't have to do that anymore. You oh. could You could just pull out your phone, start your car, and back it out. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. your smartphone would actually back the car out of the space for you, and then you could hop in and go. That technology is already available. Okay. So you'll start seeing it in 2015 vehicles. Mm. So it'll link to your car and move that up. Now, the next thing that will happen with that will be when you come out of a shopping mall or whatever, as long as you're on private property, you will be able to use these technologies. So if you're at a, at a commercial store or whatever, you will be able to summon your car okay. to the front door. <laughs> summon my car. <laughs> here, boy. Get over here. So those, those are – actually, I like the parking one. You know, summon in my car – I mean, I'm already lazy enough. I always park way far away, so I at least get a little exercise when oh, I'm yeah, shopping. Me too. You know, uh, kinda, sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes you don't have a choice, yeah. but but I suppose if it's raining or something, it'd be sure. kind of cool to bring the car to the front door if you got too many packages to take out. Yeah, I can remember you. many a Christmas Eve going shopping, and it was blistering cold out, and you come out and you forgot where you parked. Yep. So you're wandering all over the parking lot in the cold. Oh, exactly. That's, that's a lot of fun. Exactly. Now the other thing too, there's a couple semis. Uh, they're coming out with this, and, and it's being developed in Germany where you can use your smart device to back up a truck. Oh. Now, have you, I'm sure you've seen this before. And I mean, I mean I, that's fascinating to me because those guys are amazing what they can do with the big semis. They are amazing. I mean, I, I, mean, would, I would jackknife immediately. I have no idea how they do it. I have it no idea the how they do it. It's crazy. Yeah. But with that said, if they could get out of the cab... Maybe they wouldn't have to, you know, kind of jockey back and forth like they yeah. have to, or whatever, because they can't quite see around a corner. They could actually walk around and, you know, surveil the situation and sure. then back it up with with your handheld device. That's kind of cool when you think yeah. about that. So uh, maybe a little freaky too, but uh, it is kind of <laughs> cool. You know, we we talk about this stuff now. And the first time you see this, you're going to be like, are you kidding me? There's nobody sitting in that cab and you're backing this truck up, yeah. you know. Going to take some getting used to, but that's that will be coming. Uh, and the thing that I really like about some of these autonomous features, though, uh, for example, Peterbilt is going to be putting in um, lane changing capability. You know, have you ever oh. pulled up along the side of a semi truck and they're trying to? You can you just know they're trying to get into your lane. Yeah. Real uneasy feeling when you. I do was that. in an accident once. I got uh, I don't know what do you call it when they are trying to change the lanes and you get caught. Right. Si- is that si- being sideswiped? Yes, yes. Yeah, I yep. was sideswiped okay, once by a semi. Okay, okay, okay. I mean, everybody turned out fine. It was sure. minor damage, but sure. it was scary. But the thing is, is a lot of times they probably have no clue you're there. Yeah, exactly. You, you know, get caught in their blind spot. Yeah, exactly. That's and how I, you learn to watch for the blind spot. So that's, you know, one of the things with lane changing technologies will be that the truck will notify the driver that yeah. there's actually somebody in the lane next Was to you. Was it like a little radar system? Yeah, I there? suppose yeah. It, may, it may not even allow you to make the change, you know, until after, unless you have to, of course. Mm. But, but uh, so there's some of those things that are yeah. coming out. It'll also adapt to the speed of the person in front of you. So, you know, if you got it in cruise control and you're coming up on somebody, it'll actually slow down a little bit just on its own. Yeah. So, which is kind of cool too. Um, other, this is really interesting. There's a, a, Drone. Now I hate to use the word drone, but that's what everybody uses. So drone. Uh, that's right. Yeah. But uh, there's one that's called Nixie, and this is crazy. It's Nixie. A, it's a camera. N i x i e. Okay. It's a camera that. Nixon. Nixie. Nixie. Yes. Okay. So it's a camera that you wear on your wrist, like a watch. Very Dick Tracy. Yes. It's very Dick Tracy. Yes. So you unstrap the watch part of it, and there's four props, and it will fly. <laughs> okay. Okay. That so, is Dick Tracy. So if you want to, if you're at a concert or something, you want to take a photograph or a family reunion, or whatever, you want to take mm-hmm. a photograph from the sky or from the air, aerial shot. It will yeah. actually fly up, take a photo, and then return to your wrist. Oh wow! How crazy is that? <laughs> yep. Yep. Boom. So it unstraps. It, it actually got, has got four little props on it. It just takes off from there and then Whoa. just comes back to you. It's just the craziest thing. Uh, so that's that's you know. Kind of a combination of 
of wearable technology and a drone. And it'll be interesting yeah. to see as we move forward. It's got a little propeller in it. Yeah, it goes... Four of them. Four of them. Oh, four of them. Yes. So so it's like, you know, it's, it's uh, sweat. I don't have a photo of it here, but it straps together. Yeah. So around your wrist. But when you un- when you unleash it, it kind of forms an X. Okay. Is what it does. And then it takes off yeah. from that. So that's how that works. Uh, um, let's see. What else we got going on here? Oh, um, have you seen the swarm technology? That the, the swarm technology. That, that the Navy is using. This is amazing. You haven't seen this? No. Okay. So they have a kit that you can put in a boat, and it will make the boat autonomous. So think of an aircraft carrier that has a swarm of smaller boats <sighs> that protect it. And it goes around them all the time. Its main purpose is, per- is to protect the boat. So if there's something launched at the boat, it can intercept. If there's a, a, another boat coming towards it, it can, it'll say, all right, I'm going to move four boats and swarm that boat so it can't get any closer yeah. to this boat. And it does this all autonomously. Very interesting. And they can, they, it's a kit. So it's not like they have to build new boats. And these things are like little tiny boats that uh, buzz around the... Uh, they can do it to any boat. boat. Okay. Any boat that they have with the fleet. Yeah. So, you know, most of those naval carriers or whatever, I'm sure, have many smaller boats with them. Yeah. So they can just convert any boat that they have. They put this kit in it, and it will just survey. You know, it'll go around, do Whoa. surveillance, do whatever it needs to do within a perimeter of the main boat. Well, those Navy guys, they get all the cool toys. It is very, very yeah. cool. And uh, you know, you think about the attacks that have, you know, been against our naval, you know, boats or what have you. Oh yeah. And a lot of times, it's just they're just ramming another boat into it. Yeah. You know, uh, I oh, remember back in was it 2000 when there was a uh, a boat that rammed. I'm trying to remember the name of the boat that was affected. But but this is actually you're bringing up the exact case I'm talking about yeah, here okay. too. Okay, this is where the technology they got about a thinking year about 9/11, this. Yeah. Right, right. They started thinking about how can we protect our larger boats with smaller boats. Sure. And this is where this technology. And believe it or not, it's already being used. So there's a couple of boats that are already using this technology. Good. So uh, it's very very cool stuff. It really is. Um, law enforcement, this is where I really see drones and maybe other autonomous vehicles making a huge impact. Mm-hmm. I think maybe we talked about this before, too. But there's I think the, we touched on it, yeah. The one with the taser, did we talk about that? No. <laughs> this is so funny. You can launch a taser at a guy from your wrist? Or? From your drone. Okay, so law, enfor- drone. Okay. So law enforcement, uh, what it does is it actually can identify or it identifies the person who perpetrated the crime, and it'll follow them. Okay. Yeah. So if they hop in a car or whatever, the one thing that's wonderful about this is, you know, the high speed chase scenario gone. Ah. So you don't have to worry about doing a high speed chase through crowded city blocks yeah. or whatever like that. The drone will just follow them wherever they go. Okay. Mm-hmm. But it's equipped with a taser as well. So if it has the opportunity, it'll tase the person. So on their first trial run, the thing goes up locks in on somebody and goes after them. Yeah. It was the inventor. And it, it the inventor was actually trying to get away from this drone and okay. it kept going on and it actually tased him. It actually tased him. Okay. <laughs> Zap. I think it's just hilarious. I'm sure his underwear was never the same. Never the same yeah. again. That's right. So anyway, you know, there's some very, very cool things that are coming down the pike as far as uh um autonomous features that will be available in your cars very shortly. I believe Mercedes is coming out with um, advanced cruise control, I guess is the best way you could say it. Okay. So, And when you go on the interstate, when you tap your cruise control, it actually takes over your driving. And that's going to be available in 20, some 2015 models. Well, yeah. I mean, with the cruise control we have now, we're, we're more than halfway there already. Pretty much. I mean, the car practically drives itself right. as is. Right, right. You know, it's just a matter of somebody has to steer the vehicle. Yeah. You know, well, this will actually take care of that now. It'll the actually steer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'll take care of all of that while you're on the interstate now. So uh, you'll start seeing features like this, you know, as, as uh, things start moving forward. Of course, the technology is dramatically much farther along than what they're introducing. They feel that they have yeah. to take the public in baby steps because the technology is actually there to drive the car by itself. Well, yeah. You know, so... But the people aren't ready for it. Um, that's correct. Well, I mean, you also got the infrastructure, the way the traffic, the highways are set up, the traffic lights and everything else. There's a lot of software that has to be developed yet sure. and that type of thing, that too. Makes sense, you know? yeah. So, But uh, it is kind of starting to come together. 
And I see the day when you and I are going to be able to hop into a vehicle and say, take me home. Take me home, daddy. And it will take you home. Or, you know, my wife likes to say, home, James. (laughs) And so appropriate on your anniversary today. I know, I know. Yes, yes. So, yeah, I I really do see that happening. And uh, uh, I think a person needs to keep aware of these type of scenarios that are coming at you. And... Now, you know, how are they going to do that? Are they going to bring it on all at once, no. or are they just going to kind of incrementally? It's going to be incremental. Okay, well, it's probably they, just as well. They're just really concerned about you know the adaptation of people. I mean, yeah. how, how are you going to feel the first time you see somebody driving down the road and there's nobody behind the steering wheel? It's going to be kind of interesting, the reaction that you'll have. Yeah, well, so. you know, with my weird sense of humor, you know what I would do? I would uh, get a chimpanzee or something and set it up so it looked like he was driving. <laughs> <laughs> that would be hilarious. <laughs> so, all right, we're at the break. Kate Aquino, Miss Metaverse. So come on back. Right now, 43. Get the app called Radio Pup for your iPhone and take us everywhere you go. Biz Market Man Dan's own Super Talk 1270. We're back to the Tech Ranch. Stream this program now at supertalk1270.com. Here is your guru of geek. Marlo Anderson. And joining us is Kate Aquino, Miss Metaverse. Kate, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm glad to be back. Hey, we're excited to have you back as well. We have all kinds of topics to talk about today. I know we're going to get into fusion in a little bit, but I wanted to pick your brain a little bit. Do you know anything about Bitcoin? About Bitcoin? Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm actually really surprised it hasn't catched on as quickly as I thought it would. But it is catching on. It is. It definitely is. I'm, I'm happy to see. Actually, when you go on Overstock.com, you could purchase, make your purchases using Bitcoin now. Well, I noticed that there are some hotels that are starting to take it as well. Definitely. And ATMs have popped up all over the place. So it's, it's definitely really exciting. And uh, do, you, do you know the premise behind uh, Bitcoin? Can you explain to everybody, maybe some people who haven't heard of it before? Yes. Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency. So basically, it's a, it's a new currency that's you know, different than our our regular system of money right now. Um, But it's kind of really interesting because it's all on the web. It's a digital currency. And, but it's, it's being traded now. I mean, like we were just saying a second ago, I mean, you can, you could start using it at, at retail stores and ATMs are taking it and, it should be more popular than ever in like the next couple of years, hopefully. But there's been other um, cryptocurrencies similar to Bitcoin, which have come and gone. And Bitcoin seems to be the one that's been sticking around the longest. And also, people are starting to learn about, um, you can get involved with um, Bitcoin mining, which is you can hook up servers and, and certain tech to your house. And by running these systems at your home, you could actually be making money from home just by having all these connections and servers mining for Bitcoins. It's, it's pretty cool. You can Google it and check it out. Sure. And and I, I don't know if, you know, in the Bitcoin world, uh, is that still, you know, is there some money to be made there as far as with mining yet, or is that pretty much gone now? No, you could definitely make some money doing it. Uh, the more power you're putting into it, the more money you're going to be making. So okay. if you have some pretty decent um, connections and you're able to run a couple servers to, to get it going, sure, you can definitely get some money. And now you're able to actually go out and make real purchases using Bitcoin. So it's something maybe to look into. Yeah. You know, if somebody's interested in doing that, uh, check out Bitcoin. There, the reason I kind of brought it up is, are you familiar with Murray Coin? Not really, no. Okay. Well, that it's actually uh, kind of a derivative of Bitcoin. And you were talking about some of them that have come and gone. This is actually seeing some staying power now, which is interesting. And and uh, it's it's named after Bill Murray, by the way, which is why it's <laughs> called Murray Coin. And uh, yeah, it it, it is kind of you know. And I guess the money that they're making with it right now goes to one of uh, Bill Murray's uh, favorite charities or something. Not that he's endorsing this. It's just one of these things that have kind of taken off. Although you never know. <laughs> <laughs> well, that sounds good to me. I, I love Bill Murray, so I think I might invest in that one. Yeah, you'll have to go check it out. You can you actually go to murraycoin.com, M-U-R-R-A-Y-C-O-N, actually .org, excuse me, murraycoin.org, and uh, check it out. Uh, yeah, it would be kind of fun. And, and they actually have mining available with that as well, so uh, I would certainly go do that. So anyway, so let's talk about fusion a little bit. And, and uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about the difference between fusion and fission. 
Okay, so fission is our our what we're usually recognized with, and fusion was fusion was really big. I think it was maybe a decade or two ago. People were talking about the promise of fusion and how we thought fusion, it was yeah. going to be like this next big breakthrough, right? Right. Um, fusion is essentially the same way our, our sun generates um, has nuclear reactions. So it's very similar to that. It's kind of really hard to pull off. Um, this is why we haven't had fusion, but fusion would be great if we could have it because it promises way, way less catastrophic effects than fission because fission, as we all know, with the Fukushima, hor- the horrible effects of Fukushima and everything like that, um, that was our, our typical, you know, nuclear systems that we have today. Fusion is totally different. Fusion would be creating less less dangers in a lot of different ways. And not only that, but it could have the potential to give us unlimited unlimited oh, excuse me. <laughs> unlimited clean energy that could run for for the whole planet basically. Well if I, awesome. you know, to get down to the, the, the basic part of it, fission is the splitting of yeah, the particles, down, right, the right. Where fusion is fusing things together, correct? I mean, am I two hydrogen atoms and you fuse, fuse them together, them. Yep. and in the process, <clears throat> some energy is given off. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's and, the difference. And Lockheed Martin is basically this. Just recently, last week, they announced that they're building a fusion um, prototype that should be ready within the next five years, and they believe that by 2020, that they're going to have an up and running. Um, fusion reactor that's small enough to fit in the back of a pickup truck Whoa. and could power a small town with unlimited free clean energy. That's absolutely amazing. And are they are they thinking about uh, what other applications besides just powering you know our towns? I mean, is is, is there talk about airplanes and things like that as well? well yeah, so actually they're planning on doing a prototype in the next five years. But between 10 and 15 years, they're planning on actually starting with planes and aircraft and then eventually going to towns and communities, as, uh, you know, in the future. So do they have any type of cost estimates yet? Let's say, you know, you're talking about this fusion reactor that could power a small town. I mean, is is this comparable to building a new power plant or dramatically less well, they didn't really say. Um, you know, Lockheed Martin basically made this announcement because they said they're going to be seeking funding just to get the prototype together. So I think once they have an idea of how much it's actually going to cost for the prototype, then they'll probably release another statement saying how much and if and when it's going to happen. So that's why I was saying on my blog, I'm not really sure if we should get too excited about this, this recent breakthrough and fusion, but... It definitely is exciting. I, I think there definitely has to be some kind of change as quick as possible. Yeah. Well, let me be the devil's advocate here. Let me be the guy who uh, reigns on everybody's parade <laughs> and point out that fusion is already used in hydrogen bombs. It can be used uh, to develop weapons. Is there any serious concern that this kind of technology can be used for nefarious purposes? Not that I know of. I'm not really familiar with, with that too much. Um, I know that I have a dear friend of mine who's all about hydrogen, and he believes that the future is going to be in hydrogen energy and, and nothing else. So um, when you said that, that kind of rung a bell. <laughs> yeah. um, but you know, I mean, it's not easy to develop a hydrogen bomb. I know that. It's not easy to develop an atomic bomb, let alone a hydrogen bomb, which I would imagine is much more complicated. I, I, I believe so. Yeah. It's, it's got to be more difficult than what we're talking about here because um today when you when you're going to build a nuclear bomb i think that there's quite a few things you have to assemble together first yeah. you know it's not going to be like fusion right now we're having a difficult time just getting together um if lockheed martin's going to take a couple years just to get a fusion reactor small enough to get into a pickup truck then i couldn't imagine how long it would take to get one together to do some kind of damaging thing with it you know Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, so you're thinking that there's a little bit of, a, especially since Lockheed's getting behind this, that there's probably going to be, you know, there's the possibility of this happening is is a little more significant than it was in the past. Correct? Yes, definitely. In the past, there was more speculation about how wonderful it could be, but it was more like science fiction back then. And it's it's really great now to have a company like Lockheed Martin be really behind it and say, no, this is actually happening. We have the science. It's ready to go. 
So that's why it really is, it, it was so big this week, and people were talking about it so much. But then again, people were saying, you know, we can't get too hyped up. This isn't, we're not going to have a world of unlimited clean energy just off fusion alone. Um, I personally think that fusion could be the future. I wish that there would be a bigger push to get, if, if there really is promising this free, much less dangerous clean energy, then I think that it should be pushed much faster than, you know, 2020 or 2030. I think it needs to happen now, to be honest. Well, I think with, with Lockheed, you know, get behind it, that that's a pretty big deal, actually. And sometimes it just takes a major company uh, to you know, kind of get behind it and push it a little bit to make it happen. Because to this point, that hasn't happened with Fusion. Yeah. No, and, and what's really great, too, and, and this is huge, is that they said that this new Fusion system can be put into our existing infrastructure, which is going to be huge. Good. You know, so we don't have to take everything down. That's going to save lots and lots of money. Absolutely. We're going to have to do all new systems. See, and, and to me, when, when you have a major company like you know Lockheed coming out and saying this, they're not telling us everything. I think they already have some advances or an idea on something because I don't think they'd be talking about it at this level if they didn't already have something you know that might be working. Uh, and I'm just I'm just throwing that out there because you know for them to put the resources behind this uh, behind you know something that is you know been kind of science fiction to this point doesn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. So I, I just think that there's more to this story that we're not hearing. I completely agree with you. I 100%. I think that they've had this for oh, quite a while. I think that if you look into the history of this team, this team, the Skunk Works team at, uh, at Lockheed Martin has been working on Fusion for several decades now. And I totally think that they've probably had this for quite a while. And it seems that the announcement was intended just to start really getting some backing from government and also companies, investors um, into it. So I think that there must be something, and, and hopefully this can get pushed along much faster, depending on how much how much money and, and support is uh, shown for it. Amazing, absolutely amazing. So, and you know, I see where, you know, I I know we have some energy issues in our country here, but you know, I really think about you know how do you advance third world countries. This would be something that I think would you know because you you bring third world countries to the level of standard of living that we're at. And a lot of that has to do with power. And yeah. if we can get power to these people, that changes the dynamic of the entire world. So after the break, everybody, Kate will be back. And we'll be talking about the most connected person. So come on back. Right now, 50. Your news leader. Weeknights at 6 and 10. Super Talk 1270. Follow the guru of geek everywhere he goes. Post your comments or questions at thetechranch.com. Once again, your guru of geek, Marlo Anderson. And if you want to know more about what Miss Metaverse Kate Aquino is talking about, go to her website, futuristmm.com. That's F U T U R I S T M M.com. And I will have that link at thetechranch.com as well. And on the phone, of course, Miss Metaverse herself, Kate Aquino. And Hello. Hi. <laughs> <We> <laughs> All got, right. So we're back. We got a lot of awesome stuff. We got to fit in here while yes. we got our show going. Yes. So. <laughs> so go right into it. What do you got next for us? All right. So Chris Dancy, have you heard of him? I have not. I just, just not until this morning. All right. Chris Dancy, he's known as the world's most connected man. And this man... He has made tech just his entire life, and his story is just totally out of this world. Chris Dancy was fired from his job. He was an IT guy, and after losing, not fired, excuse me, he wasn't fired, he was let go from his job, and all of a sudden he just had this epiphany about changing his life using technology today. So he started downloading these apps, and these smart apps, the smartphone apps actually helped him lose 100 pounds and he just organized his whole life just using technology, free apps you can download now. And the result of doing all this, he ended up spending $40,000 in one year on tech, purchasing all like the, the latest and greatest wearables from Google Glass to the Narrative Clip to Jawbone to all these, all these products, all these wearables and, and all this tech combined. And the result is him actually becoming Internet famous for being this world's most connected man. 
So what kind of connectivity does he have? So he's, he's, his background's in IT, but he was able to start organizing his life using technology in ways that a lot of us don't really think about. So let's say every time he sends out a tweet or every time he does a Facebook post or even sends a message on his, you know, on his iPhone or anything like that, he actually logs it and records it and he saves it. And all this data, using all this data, he makes all these really expensive graphs and is able to track his behaviors and change, make changes where, where whatever is needed. Okay. And I'm just looking at the list of, of the different things that he wears right now. So, and I'm assuming that this graph that you have on your website is, is probably his most current stuff. So um, he's wearing a Fitbit. He's wearing a Pebble watch. He's wearing a Jawbone. Um, a heart rate monitor, a narrative camera, uh, Google Glass, a back sensor, Galaxy Gear, and a body media fit. I am not familiar with the body media fit. Um, so he's keeping track of his heart rate, his, you know, all of this stuff, I guess. And the narrative camera, tell me a little bit about that. So I actually own the narrative camera. It's this little uh, square clip that you put. You can clip it onto your shirt, and it's probably like an inch by. It's like one inch by one inch square that you can clip onto your shirt or, or jacket or anything that you're wearing. And it takes a picture every 30 seconds, and you can put that into a time lapse video of or, or anything like that of your day. As, oh, okay. you know, Each day it gets logged like that. So okay. it's pretty interesting. <laughs> that is pretty interesting. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Uh, Google Glass, of course, we, you and I have talked about that a little bit. We're both big fans of Google Glass, but why don't you tell everybody what Google Glass is? Right, so Google Glass is uh, the, big, the big glasses that were really hyped up in the last year. And it's really exciting because um, with Google Glass, you can do a lot. Like you, I, He's actually able to look at somebody and almost read their heartbeat just by looking at them. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It was something really exciting like that. I was watching an interview with him, and he was saying that he was able to do just just using Google Glass, like read the people's expressions, and it's almost like being like a cyborg, except for a cyborg would have the technology actually built into them somehow. Um, but his everything that he has is external, at least for now. And, was, uh, but okay. it's, it's pretty interesting. So even when he reads the text, because he has like the armband on and all these things, it's all connected into one. Uh, but back to Google Glass, Google Glass, he's able to just walk around and wearing these glasses, he could uh, make a video call or he could use the glasses to record whatever he's looking at. Um, it's basically what we use through our smartphones. Everything's through the glass. You right. speak to the glasses and the glasses has a system where you communicate with it and you can tell the glasses what to do. And of course, if you're, you know, if you have friends in, in a particular restaurant or whatever, it'll actually, if you're walking down the street, it'll actually tell you that you have people in there that you know and all this, all this great stuff. So uh, Google Glass is absolutely amazing. And we haven't even begun to scratch the surface of that capability yet. There's going to be so many advances in that. In Definitely. That so, For sure. Um, okay, so he uses all this information. And, I mean, does, does, does this actually you know, help his day? I mean, is he more organized? I mean, t tell me why you'd want to do all of this. So he said that, you know, a problem with what he's doing is that he did it to better his life. This is all technology that he, he basically says, listen, you know, everyone's trying to fetishize him and make him into this, you know, uh, persona. But he's, all he says, listen, stop, stop looking at me like that. I am you, but only a couple years from now. And he's right, because when we think about how our technology is right now, you have to buy all these different gadgets and do all these different things to achieve the effect that someone like Chris is able to do, where he's monitoring his health all the time, and he's able to see how, when he read a certain text, what his heartbeat was like. And all this data puts into one big picture of what your day is and how everything you interact, how everything affects you when you interact with your environment, right? So. Right. All this is going to become pretty streamlined in the future. So let's say in five years from now, you're wearing a T-shirt. All this stuff is going to be integrated, and you're not going to have to have 20 gadgets on you to, to pull off the effect that he's getting right now. And it's true. I mean, he's, he's able to walk into his house, and his you know he, he has all the smart gadgets for your home already connected. So when he comes home, 
he walks in, um, depending on his mood or heartbeat, the room lighting will actually change colors and music can come on to help calm him down if he's had a rough day or something. And these are things that are going to be very common in the future. So, you know, I, I'm just thinking about even right now, I mean, with, with the Apple Watch about ready to hit and then the, uh, um, what's the Samsung watch again, the 360? Right, yeah. yes, definitely. I mean, both of those have a lot of this stuff already built into mm-hmm. it. And these are brand new watches that are just coming out. And, you know, so you're talking about the integration of this stuff already. It's already happening. I mean, there's, you know, with the Apple Watch, I'm just looking at the list of stuff that he has on here. Probably half of the stuff that he wears right now is going to be integrated into that watch. Exactly. It's a lot of the stuff is going to be streamlined into our clothing, into our homes, um, and, and, you know, hopefully in the future we won't be staring down at our phones anymore. Everything's going to be pretty streamlined, so we'll just keep on moving about our day, but we will be totally connected with our phone in the palm of our hand constantly. I, I would be okay with that, actually, because I have to tell you, one of my pet peeves is when I'm walking down the street and I have to actually move out of the way of other people walking down the street because they're not looking up. <laughs> have you noticed Definitely. this phenomena? I mean, you, you walk down a busy sidewalk and everybody is looking at their screen and they're running into each other. It's a craziest thing that's going on right now. Yes, and think about it. I mean, how many of us, just after our day, you know, if you're working on the computer or you're just using your iPad even, you're, at the end of the day, your wrist is just a mess. I mean, you just you feel it. If you're an editor, you're, you're editing pictures or video or anything like that, too. I mean, by the, end, by the end of the day, you're doing your creative things or whatnot. I mean, you, it's not good for your, your hands. And to make this hands-free, and it's going to really just help people so much. Absolutely. In fact, uh, as you're talking about this, Jim has been pounding on his keyboard for the last 20 minutes himself right on the air here. So uh, it, it is one of those things that we do uh, constantly. Multitasking. That's what it is. Absolutely. So yeah, it's very, very cool. So anything, any last-minute things that, that you want to bring up yet today, Kate? Um, hmm, geez, there's always things to talk about. <laughs> okay, so let's let's go. We were, Jim and I were talking about autonomous vehicles a little bit ago. What is your favorite drone or autonomous vehicle that's out there right now? Hmm. I think the, the favorite thing that I saw, and this is what I mentioned uh, at the after the Maker Fair, was the the multi-copter that I saw. Oh, yeah, was, yeah. The 16 was a, instead of a quadcopter, it had 16 blades on it, and that's going to be helping us in the future. By you know, if there's an emergency or, or whatnot, it can carry up to 100 pounds, and that's only going to grow. You know, so so how big was exciting. this? Yeah, <laughs> uh, was, was it like the size of a car? Was it smaller than that? It was really small. It was about I'd say probably about mm, four feet wide. Wow. Okay. Right. And you can just deploy. So, have you seen the Nixie? Um, no. The, you'll have to check this out. It's actually a wearable camera. You know, you're talking about wearable, wearable gear. It's a wearable camera, and when you unstrap it from your wrist, it's actually got four props on it. It becomes a drone, so you can huh? take it airborne. And, and after after it takes a couple of photos, it bring, comes right back to your wrist. Oh, that's awesome! Oh, and last before we go, Tesla. They just announced that within the next five years, I believe. They're hoping to have autonomous Teslas available, and that would be awesome. Very cool. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you again next week.